Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from the Automator. And we're following up on a video we made earlier today on using Rafadium to automate Chrome. In the earlier video, which I'd still say go check it out, it's a it's a good overall like why we're excited about it. Yeah, this video, we're going to demo a little bit of how to use it and some of the steps to go through. Yeah. So <laughs> Rafadium is the web driver now, uh, well, wrapper that uh, CO786 created for us. I'm going to complain about <laughs> the name. Like you, you made it so hard for me to say it and type it. So <laughs> there is a, a hot strings, I, baby, hot strings. Yeah, yeah come on. Yeah, yeah, you're going to do that. Um, but in general, you go to their site, uh, download the code, however you feel more comfortable with. Um, you have here the option for downloading the zip or you know cloning the repository if you want to do that. And down here, you have to go to the web driver and download it. Now, there is a, a, an interesting point that was uh, one of the things that I noticed. Of course, you would have to download the version that you have. I would assume that I had the latest version, so I went ahead and downloaded that, but I didn't have it. And I well, went to Chrome, yeah. Right. And I went to Chrome and I tried to uh, like update it and it says it's up to date, 101. So you make sure that you first check what Chrome version you have and you have to download the version, the, the driver that version yeah. that matches that, that version. Not, it cannot be whatever you want. It's, don't assume. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, you might also, this is one of those things, if you're going to end up doing this a lot, you might turn off that auto Chrome updates because suddenly yeah. you might find your Chrome automation stops working and be very puzzled, right? <laughs> About <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. But in general, you just need the driver. It doesn't matter which location you have it in. You just need the driver. I put it right there where the driver is. That's all you need and you're set up for starting up. So uh, as soon as you have that, here I just went ahead and opened a VS Code window on that folder. I have my driver that I just downloaded. And I went ahead and took a look at the code a little bit, you know, just checking what the functions are, what do I have available? Which classes and stuff I do have available? I do, I noted when I was testing that the Chrome driver EXE was getting turned on by the class. But then when you finished your program, the thing was, sta it stayed open. What I noticed is that the current version of this, I'm gonna mention that to him later on, um, or just submit a pull request. Uh, he has the exits all commented out. So if you download your uh, your version of it, just go ahead and search for the delete keys and just uncomment the quits because that is what releases the EXE. And actually what I would do is control shift F to find it in all files and make sure, look at that, there's another one here. <laughs> so yeah, it would find it in all the files. And for some reason he had them, maybe he was testing something. He has them all set to comment that. So just go ahead and update that if it is not there. And now we're good to just start. So what I'm gonna do, let's just open the MD file. And what I usually would do is just grab one of the examples and just copy paste it because I don't want to be paste copying <laughs> the whole thing, right? Uh, like like the, the, <laughs> the name of the thing, I, I found it very complicated. So I create a new file, test.hk, let's name it. Let's go ahead and close everything out. Stay with this guy. I have my uh, comment. I do not need anything else. I don't need the comments. First of all, we need the include, right? Second of all, you need to specify the path to the driver. He set it into a variable and then pass it. You might just put it in right there because it's not that big. And so you have to keep in mind that you have to do two things. First of all, you have to load the driver, which is an object that he has in the uh, Rufadium thing. So he's, he has a class called run driver, which loads the driver and you have it here now. And then that object, you have to pass it to the Rufadium uh, uh, object as a parameter. So make sure that you do that. It is two steps, loading the driver and passing the driver to the Rufadium 
uh, thing. And after you have your object, your Chrome object, you can already perform a few things because the Rufadium object allows you to do some things. But the main and most used one and most important one is creating a session. So you Chrome new session and a new session basically is a page. Now, keep that in mind because in the examples that he's showing all the time, his examples all refer to sessions. So he's, he, uh, let me see if I find here. So he gets session and now all his examples, he uses session new tab, uh, session navigate, session, you know, whatever it is, is session. Well, if you named it page, every single example that says session, in this case, it would be page, okay? You just have to take that into consideration. It's the same thing. It's just however you named it. If you want to work with the examples exactly like that, then just name this a session. And now you can copy the examples and paste it. That's okay. Not an issue. In my case, I will just keep it as a page because that makes it, uh, for me, it makes most sense. We're working with a page, not with a session. So now that I have the page, I'm going to grab that page and navigate to a location. Let's go ahead and use the automator. That's a neat site. I've heard of that. <laughs> dot com, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice site. And first of all, before we do anything uh, relevant, let's just test what happens. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what happens here. Um, I'm already filtering my Process Explorer by Chrome driver. So Chrome driver, I'm filtering by it. What should happen is that it should open a new page. It should show me the Chrome browser that we're going to be automating. And then it's going to delete the page and the Chrome driver executable should go away. So that's what I'm expecting. And that's actually a point I'd like to really you know, focus on for a second here is you literally have two different programs. You know, the, the Chrome instance is truly Chrome launching. And then there's a web driver executable that is automated. That is connecting. Yeah, exactly. And, and you might close the Chrome driver, but it's going to keep your window open, but now you cannot control it. <laughs> you know, so, so be careful because if you delete uh, the object, you lose connection to the driver. That's what happens. Right. So keep those in mind. Maybe he was kind of like uh, commenting all the exits because he was testing something. Because for example, if I have five pages, each of them in their own object, and I close one of them or release one of them, that would close my Chrome driver and now all the other pages cannot actually get automated. So maybe he wants to keep a, a count of how many pages have Chrome driver there and while you close them when you close the last one then go ahead and close the chrome driver maybe that's what he was trying but in any case let's just run it and i should get either an instance did nothing happen or is it too fast no it's not that let's do the following let's go ahead and uh i should get a new instance though I'm not getting anything. So let's well, see. Recording this. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting one. So let's see what is going on. Uh, I pause here. Ah, very likely something to do with this. Uh, let me see something. What is my driver? Oh, well, it has a driver there. Yeah. So my driver is set. My Chrome, what is Chrome? Chrome, 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 Chrome. Where is Chrome? Ah, here it is. It is a Rufadium class, so that's good. Everything looks okay. And now new page. What are you doing there? So page now is empty. That's what happens. So the new page is coming up blank, and that is not good. So, oh, I know what happened. It's because it's not new page, it's new session. <laughs> I, 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 I actually kind of like <laughs> replaced that by mistake. That's what happens. So let's go ahead and test this one. Now I should get a, uh, an instance. Yeah, there it is. Um, something interesting to note here is that whenever you open this, uh, let me see, something happened there about the connection. The connection with the server was terminated. Okay. 
You know, we'll see what happened there. But notice that here you get a banner that says Chrome is being controlled by an automatic software, an automated software. So this cannot be you, dismissed. You said that, but I'm curious if you were to maybe maybe you try this already. Can you close the ex the Chrome driver executable? Um, I haven't tried that. So the Chrome driver is not yeah. there. So the Chrome driver is no longer there because the script exited. And oh, then you can't. Okay, it already you already tested what I was thinking. Right, right, right. Okay. So Chrome driver is not there. But let's go ahead and stop right here and verify. Oh, come on. Okay, so let's just stop there. That's something that I do not like sometimes that the the breaking points do not work. So it's navigating, it stopped before returning. So right now I would, yeah, there it is. So Chrome driver is here, but when the script goes out, then Chrome drivers gets closed. And that means that then you will not be able to connect to it any longer. So in this case, now in my case, I want to do it right away, that's it. Now. This is something interesting. So this is the test.ahk. And for some reason, it's still trying to send requests, even though it's finished. That's the point. So here we go. Now that I have this, how about automating something? And this is the part that actually made it so nice about and why uh, Tank was actually praising it. Mm -hmm is that now for the page, you have access to functions or they look like that, but it's not the DOM directly, but you have functions that look like the DOM that now you can say query selector all or selector directly from the page. So it makes a lot of sense. I, I'm in a page and I want to query something from that page. In other, in other uh, ways of doing this, like- uh, Selenium or Internet Explorer, you first need to get the document out of the page, page.document or something like that. And then after you have it in a variable, or you can do it from there, but you always have to specify document, which is annoying. So you put it as doc, and then you have doc.query select. So that is no longer the case. Now you just go ahead and create your page, and now you can just go ahead and do your query selector. So let's go ahead and do something interesting with it. So uh, what we're gonna do, let me, Open the page. Let's go ahead and open theautomator.com. And what I want to do is perform a search. So just as a basic example, what I'm gonna do, we have a tool for this, <laughs> which is just like uh, getting the classes and information about a specific element in your, um, in your uh, web page. And this one is the class S right here. So that's the class for S. If it had an ID, I would use the ID itself. But here's the thing. I would test it right here. I would just go ahead and test. I mean, move this out a little bit. So good step for people to learn if they're not. Right. So if you're not used to it, you can just go ahead and do document, which is the document, dot query selector, which is what we're trying to do. And now it would be a class, which is the S, that, that's the class. And if I'm referring to a class, I have to put a dot in it for each class. And now notice that right here, I got an answer that, yeah, that exists. So now I could do a few things with it. And one of them is value. The value is whatever it is in there. Right now it is empty. So I could just set it to something like HK hotkey or something like that. And that would set the information up there. Now that I know that that works, I could just copy this up. So I could just grab this, copy it. Um, and in my code, I could just do paste it. And here where it says document, I change it to page and now it's working. You see what I mean? So let me switch the quotation marks here and the fact that you know how to do this. So you, I do a little bit of a translation going on. Script. The other one was JavaScript, correct? Like yes, the, so, so I'm testing the uh, JavaScript directly. So basically I right away tested and I got it on my code. So this is very good. And the next thing is that I want to click on the search button in, in here. And I think that is a, it is right below here, the submit button. Yeah, set, search submit, I got that. I could just hit up to get the previous text. 
Again, if it is a class, I have to put the dot. And as I'm going to be using this in AutoHotKey, let me just use the quotation mark so I don't have to. Because, yeah, JavaScript can use either. Yeah. So now I hit enter. It looks like what is working? Oh, no, sorry. It actually yeah. set the value to it. But <laughs> what I wanted to do is click. That's what I wanted to do. So let's just go ahead and do that. And let's see what happens. Yeah, there you go. So it works. So I could click on it. So now that I do that, I just copy the, page, the, the text, put it here, and change that to page. You know, So now I have working code that it was simple for me to just test it and paste it. And the driver itself makes it easier for me to update it because I just have to change one thing. I would just open, navigate, search, close, and then the Chrome window should stay open anyways. So if I run this script, I should just get to that page. Oh, look at that. I saw it. I saw yeah, it. I saw it. The, 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 yeah. the problem here is the exit. Right. So maybe that's the reason why he had it all commented out. So let's go ahead and go back with the, with the drivers here. So let me go ahead and remove these changes. Let me see what, about this one. Remove these changes as well so that it doesn't exit as soon as the script exits. Maybe that's what, what he was trying, but in general, this is something that, here we go, it would just perform the search, and there it is. And notice that here on the top right, my script, and I don't know, so let me go ahead and, here on the top right, whenever I run the script, I get some controls because I'm debugging the script. Let me show you again. So when I run it, you get these controls down here, and I know that my script finished working, because it goes away. So okay. my, my controls are gone, but my window stayed open because I'm not closing it. So basically, as you can tell, this is awesome because now I could do almost anything on a page well, without having to, you know, do much stuff. The only point now is getting to understand these uh, items in a page. And that's where our tool might come in handy because it allows you to yeah, figure we have, out. Just, to just to clarify, we haven't really, the reason why was we, before we were having a that. class and it had this, it used web sockets and was this infinite loop because of something. And this is going to help us get around it. The other thing, which we'll get to later, but we're going to work on borrowing the web driver, connecting to it and getting the cookies from Chrome and this will really help us streamline using API calls and stuff instead of having to even do the web browser stuff, right? We're just going right. to borrow the cookies. So now in this case, uh, if you need to, to automate a specific page, this would be able to kind of like load whatever, you know, profile you have. And I noticed as well that he has something called CVP. Now that for those who, yeah. So for those who are, you know, aware of that, that would be the Chrome developer protocol. And that is a very advanced level uh, connection to Chrome. And it gives you full control of Chrome in a, in a way that the other functions do not do. Um, and for example, the, this the the extended class, is that right? Yes. Is so this is the CDP that extends uh, okay. Rufadium. So basically what it does is that it adds a few functions. I think that Rufadium does not have evaluate. Let me double check on that. So let me open that one and open this one. So Rufadium, when I close it, let me see if it has evaluate. So notice that Rufadium itself, the class of Rufadium, does not have a function that says like evaluate JavaScript. It doesn't. But when you use the CDP, it actually adds a function called evaluate. And not only that, um, as I mentioned, this call uh, function allows you to pass some specific uh, methods to the browser. And one of them is to set it into, uh, uh, how do I call this, inspector mode. You know, when you're inspecting in Chrome, like you go here and you select this to highlight what is below the mouse and you have the inspector tool. Using the CDP, which is the developer protocol, you can set 
Chrome into that inspector mode. And then you can do very, very cool stuff with it. Now, the Rufadium itself does not have those options. They just give you this get sessions. It gives you, you know, uh, send information. And the session itself allows you to get the tabs, switch the tabs and stuff like that, okay? But it doesn't let you navigate or do, um, for example, like JavaScript code. I, I do not see the mm -hmm. uh, JavaScript on those oh. either. Yeah, and earlier, not on the video, but you showed me how we did this in about 20 seconds. You did a screenshot. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's true. So basically, and that those are the type of uh, things that he added to it, like page.screenshot, and you just specify the location for it, a desktop, and let's say it's going to be test.png, right? Mm -hmm. And now... It will navigate to the page and take a screenshot of whatever is visible at that moment. Just so, run it after. Yeah, let's do that. So, no, I mean, run. Well, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I just have a, add a run command to show it would actually display it instead of navigating to it. All right. Okay. So basically now yeah. I have this file here called test.png that has a screenshot of the visible portion of the page. Now, that is something that other libraries do not have available. But as you can tell, like the session object has a few interesting stuff and the way how to do those things, if you have never done that, just I just collapse the whole thing and I go class by class and I see what functions it has. And that's how I figured out that it had like, you know, wow, like switch, you can switch tabs. That is interesting. You have several tabs open and you can switch between them. That's interesting. And just by doing that, I will oh, look at that full screen minimize. Yeah. And then I found one that was for, oh, here's the get cookies and stuff. Right. And here's the screenshot or printing. You can right. print the page. So again, it has a, a lot of interesting stuff going on. And if you need way more control, then just go ahead and take a look at the CDP. And you just need the call method for that one because you would be passing the, 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 commands in the first parameter, which is, if you know what I'm talking about, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I am really happy with this uh, library. It looks good. I, I would definitely use it. Well, and the other thing is it's, it's what, a month old, right? So yeah, yeah it's totally new. And look at that. Send keys to the browser Interesting. has the CDP. Oh. Right. So that is, that is again, that could be very helpful at times. Again, yeah. uh, there's a lot of things because there are some, some pages oh, right. that have yeah. ways of detecting that you cannot send, like, yeah. like set, set the value to the right. thing. Right. But basically you can send a yeah. string by typing it. Right. So that is interesting. And I just noticed right. this one. Yeah. So, yeah. So the other thing though is this is a class. And by the way, if you're if you're not familiar with using classes, we're finishing up our intro to classes course, uh, which Isaiah has been working on for us. And it, it's gonna be very helpful for people that are new to classes. So you might wanna sign, I'll put the URL beneath me here if you're interested. I think what, maybe next week at the week after, probably the latest we'll have it be done. Be All the main videos are done. Now we're just checking the details if there's any um, any script that is missing or any additional examples, but the main videos are gone. So everything is good. Awesome. Well, thanks for that walkthrough there, Zay. It's just, this is really exciting to me. It's yeah, of, it is. It is. We've, we even had a policy where I told Isaiah, look, you know, when people, clients come to us for automating Chrome, um, I said, just <laughs> we say no, like, no nah. more. <laughs> just, um, but maybe this opens up the door to go back to that, right? So we're going to test it. We're going to actually test it a little bit more before going uh, further. But yeah, at yeah. some point, we'll make a simpler version for really new people that all they want to do is connect to the instance and fill out a form, you know, add a couple things and click. We'll make something very simple for people for that, right? At some point, right? Just to, because even, not everyone has to use classes, right? Is my point. We can make it okay. very simple, make it super easy. Sure. But this is looks pretty robust and, and pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Bye.